Have you ever wondered how they do dialogue in big RPGs? You know, those games where there's a giant story, you can go talk to a bunch of different NPCs and they all have different things to tell you. Well, today you're gonna learn how that works. I'm gonna show you how you can implement that in your own games if you happen to be a game developer and how you can create these stories and interactive narratives without even knowing how to code at all. But before we get started, if you're interested in game development and RPG development and really deep dialogue systems, then make sure you check out the link in the description below. I've got all of my courses combined into a single bundle, including a new course that's coming up in May, where we'll be going over some deep RPG elements, including, well, really complex dialogues. So before I go into the solution that I wanna provide for you today, I wanna to talk a little bit about my history with building dialogue systems. I've built quite a few of them in the past for a variety of different games. And I found that every time I built them, I wanted to build them in a slightly different way. There was always something about the previous system that I didn't really like. I built systems that were node-based, where there's just a node system where designers put in the content that the NPC says, and then they have a bunch of responses. They can click on the response, or you know, the player can click the response, and then they go to some other node and it continues on with things. And that works okay. It's usable, it's somewhat powerful, and it's easy to understand some complex branching. But what happens there is the storytelling part kind of gets lost. It gets very hard to keep track of where the story is, how it's going, unless you actually run through it and constantly test it. Now that's fine in a small scale, it's fine if it's a story that I'm writing, but when I've given it to designers who wanna write these giant novels, it's not the most usable system. Another alternative is a text-based parsing system. I've built a couple of these in the past too, but I've always struggled to get them working perfectly, to make them as powerful as a node-based system where the designer could well, write out a full story, make it understandable in text, and have the power to do other things that they wanted to do, like control the game state, check the state of something, make sure that a player has an item before an option is available, or that they give an item when they click an option. All of those things were just, you know, extra stuff that I had to keep adding in and trying to figure out, and then the branching, it just always got very, very complicated. But luckily, a few months ago, a friend of mine turned me on to a really great solution that kind of, well, I guess kind of combines the best of both of these. It's a text-based solution that's free, easy to use, and extremely easy to extend as well. So you can use a text-based system for building out dialogue where your designers or story writers can write something out that's easy to follow, easy to understand, and easy for them to build, but then also have the ability to well, tie into anything that you want in the game and easily extend it with your own code. So that's what we're gonna get into today. That system is called Ink, and let's uh, take a look at it right now. So here we are on the homepage of Inkle Studios, or inklestudios.com slash ink, where you can learn about the ink language a little bit more, but let's just go over what's here, how we can set it up, and how you can use it in your own project. First, I'm gonna scroll down and just note that they did get an epic mega grant, which is awesome. I assume that means that there's either Unreal support built in or coming very soon, but they also have a Unity plugin available. Before we dive into the Unity plugin though, we're gonna try out their editor. Let's we'll take a quick peek at the page, but what we wanna do is grab Inky, which is the ink text editor, or this little thing that you're seeing right there. So I'm gonna download the Inky file, which is just a package. I'm gonna download the Windows one right here, Inky for Windows 64. I've actually already downloaded it and it's right here. So I'm just gonna open up inky.exe. I'll double click on that and it just pops up their little editor right here. So here you can see a little text editor that says once upon a time there were two choices. There were four lines of content. They lived happily ever after. And over on the right you can see my story being read out. Once upon a time there were two choices. There are four lines of content. And then I can click on one and it's going to say hey they lived happily ever after. This is a very boring story. But this is the editor that we're going to use to build up our story. And it's a really cool tool because I can just keep adding in more options here. If I wanna add in a new option and just go enter new line, say there was a fifth, let's see if I can spell fifth right, F-I-F-T-H line as well. And I just need to give it a name. I'm gonna call this simple boring story and save it off. And I actually saved that into a Unity project folder that I set up right before this. Now I hit the rewind all. If that doesn't work, try just going in file open to reopen that file, but you'll see that the new option appears there. Now this is the simplest of the stories. And before we get into a more complex one, 
I want to jump into Unity, see it in a game development environment, and see the bigger sample story. So let's do that now. To get Unity to play ink files, all we need to do is grab the Unity ink integration off of the asset store. I've already added it to my assets, so I'm just going to hit open in Unity and have it pop up in my editor. Now that I've got my project popped up, it should show me the package manager, and it's not showing me the actual package that I need because packages is set to in project. This needs to switch over to the My Assets selection. This is a new change in Unity in the latest version where everything's in the package manager and when you open things, sometimes it doesn't switch right over. So here we go, I found my Unity Ink integration and I just want to import it. So I hit the import button and I'll choose import with everything selected. That should pull the package in and give me a nice little sample scene that shows dialog working in game that I can pull up in that editor and start to modify see how easy and awesome this actually is. So I'm going to close my package manager window. I'm going to go into the ink folder. Let's go into the demos subfolder. We'll go to the basic demo folder. This right here is a Unity package that just contains these other files. So you don't need to grab that one. I've seen people click on this and think that that's the scene file because it has the same icon. This is the one that we want. We want the .unity package inside of the basic demo file or basic demo folders. All right, and with that open, I should be able to click play and have the text kind of clear up here and then see the demo in action. So it says, hey, I looked at Monsieur Fog and could no longer contain myself no longer or said nothing. I'll say contain myself no longer. And you can see that it's going into a slightly more complex story. There's also a little player over here on the right showing everything that's happened and some extra story state and other things that are going on, like my choices that are available. Let's go through a couple more of these options and you can see that the story gets a little bit more and more complex. And then I get to the end and I can actually restart it. I could also, at the beginning of this, just choose I said nothing and go right to the end of it. So let's see how this all works, how we can extend it out and how we could put this into a real game instead of just a simple story. Although if you really wanna build just a simple story, let's be fair, you could take this demo reskin it a little bit just go through the scene controller that they've got here go into this canvas and i believe the objects in the demo are right here on this basic ink example you could just modify this prefab right here for the button and modify the text build up your whole storybook off of their thing without really doing any code at all but if you want to do some coding we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute first let's look at the story let's see how it's all set up and how we had that more complex story in ink to do that, I'm going to look at my ink folder right here and notice that I've got a .json file in here, a story.json and a story.ink. If I look at the story.ink, you can actually see what the text looks like. Now, I don't need to copy this into my ink editor. What I want to do instead is just go file, open, and then go find that actual folder. So here I'm in my projects dialog assets and I've got the ink subfolder, which matches to that. So I go into ink demos, basic demo, ink, and find the story file. So let's take a look at this file. First, I'm going to resize the editor just a little bit, make this a little bit bigger, and drag the bar over to the side so we can see the full lines. You can see over here in the preview area, we've got our first line of text here, the I looked at Monsieur Fog right there. And we've got two options that are denoted by these little stars. This first star here on line two, and the next one all the way down on line 17. These show up as the two options here on the right that I can choose from. And if I click on this first one, you see that I go in one level. It's going to give me all of the text after it. So I've clicked on my choice. I get that text there. I get the next two lines of just regular text. And then I go on to choices again that are again denoted by stars. Here we've got two stars because I'm one level indented into my story. You can see that my choices are on line five and line 15. I've got a wager or ah. If I choose ah, it's just going to kind of bounce to the end and get out of there really quickly. Let's try that out. So I'll hit ah, and first notice that a bunch of text appeared after the ah. That's what this little square brace around the period and the uh, apostrophe there is doing. It's making it so that the text appears after I've chosen the choice. The same thing will work in our games if we use this option. Next, we get the text that says after that, and it's followed by what they call glue, which just prevents a line ending or a new line from appearing between this line and the next one. So it's gonna say after that, we passed the day in silence. We're not gonna get line 17 because line 17 was one of the choices that we had skipped before. Now we have one more little branch that we didn't go in through. So I'm gonna reset the entire story, go in one more time to contain myself no longer. 
choose a wager, get down here to where I have options on line seven and eight, and just notice that they both go to the same thing. No matter which one of these I pick, it's just gonna play the text on line nine. Then I'm gonna get a couple more options where I can choose one of these three from line 10, 12, or 14. And no matter which one of them I pick, we're gonna bounce up to line 16. The only real difference is that the one on line 14 here, the I asked no further questions, won't put a new line there. Let's check it out. See, all one big, long, giant paragraph. So that's all there is to this basic story structure, but there's a whole lot more to the ink language and inkle in general. There's a lot of things you can do like branching, uh, advanced tags, and a lot more. I wanna show you really quickly a really short story that I threw together, and then recommend that you go try it out on your own. Go pull this into one of your projects, experiment a little bit with the uh, editor that they've got, and some of the different tags, maybe try writing a very simple and fun story, and just have some fun with it. See if it's something that you can use in your project. Let's take a look at my story. Here we are, I watched Jason's YouTube video about ink and either had to implement it right away or I wasn't too interested in dialogue. Let's just click on one. And you can see that, hey, I had to implement it right away, I grabbed the package and realized I'd forgotten something, so I hit the like button, or I hit the like button and commented. Let's take a real quick look at this though because I wanted to introduce one last little feature here and that's this branching system. If you look at the way that this is set up, I've actually got what they call a not in ink where I've put two equal signs and then some text here for a name and then we can just use an arrow like that, a line or a minus and then a greater than sign or just a simple arrow and then use that as a tag to jump to that section. So no matter which of the choices you have, you still get the option to go either hit the like button or hit the like button and comment. So go do either one of those right now. Either go hit the like button or like and leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this dialogue system. If you're interested in this kind of video, if you want to learn more about other systems that you can put into games. And of course, don't forget to check out the bundle deal down below for all of my courses at the price of one, including the new one that's just about to come out.